Jesus expresses to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? The same question that Jesus expressed to Martha is the question that he expresses to you. This weekend, allow Jesus to ask you deeply in your heart, Do you believe that he is the resurrection and the life? That if you believe in him, you will not die. This is the question. And this is the central theological teaching of the church. This is the central belief of the holy Catholic and apostolic church. That Jesus indeed is the resurrection and the life. And when we are in his company, we have nothing to fear because life itself is with us. You know, I remember the great film, Gladiator. I used to watch it with my grandfather. And Maximus, the great warrior, right? That opening scene, leading his troops into battle, expressed, if you find yourself alone, riding in the green fields with the sun on your face, do not be troubled, for you are in Elysium, And you are already dead. Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. And then the battle cry, and they went into battle with just complete fearlessness. Without fear, they rode in that triumphant sense of the anticipation of the reality of death. And that what they did while still alive will echo in eternity. Elysium is a mythical place from Greek mythology, a paradise, expressively for heroes. Well, we get a sense of heaven even more clearly than mythology because Jesus Christ is the resurrection, is the life. And he gives us that foretaste, even still today in the church, of what heaven is all about. In the company of Jesus We see the kingdom. And that is what we experience in the readings today. From the prophet Ezekiel, this whole sense of God opening the graves and having our loved ones rise from them. To realize that God has the authority to open our grave. Wow. So many of us have experienced death, death of a loved one. And all of us are experiencing the mortality rates all around the world because of this coronavirus. This is not something that should cripple us in fear. No, this is a wonderful time in Lent to be able to draw from the perspective of the gospel passage the very good news that God wants to express to you. God continues to speak life into the world. The church continues to proclaim it because that is the church's responsibility. And you, my brothers and sisters, as mystical members of the body of Christ, live this out wholeheartedly when you respond to Jesus as Martha did. Yes, Lord, I do believe. I have come to believe without a doubt my whole heart that you are the Christ You are the son of the living God. This is what we believe as followers of Jesus Christ. That he has the power and the authority to open up our graves. And bring the perspective of eternal life. Why would God give us such an ache? Why would God give us such a sense of self-preservation? Or a longing for perfect harmony and health? Why would we go through these present days when life is under a microscope and that power which destroys life is causing a pandemic? Well, if we can draw anything from these days, we should draw on the security of the promise of Jesus Christ and his power that is expressed most perfectly 
as Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb. We could be walking dead. You know, I, I was talking with a great doctor in the local area here just recently, and she had said, this is a perfect scenario for the walking dead. And it truly is. We could isolate ourselves and feel like we are dead inside. Mankind made in the image and likeness of God. Every man, woman, and child, every created human being has been made in the image and likeness of God and made to be light. We are called to be children of light. We are called to transmit that light wherever we go. And in that light, we have life. And light is directed. Light is projected. It is not restricted. No darkness can overcome the light because the light is what scatters the darkness. Allow Jesus, light from light, true God from true God, break into your homes, into your hearts this Sunday. And let it come with a promise. Let Jesus' promise that he expresses today that I am the resurrection and the life, that he who believes in me will never die, let that promise dictate your belief. I had an awesome experience of working at a cemetery. In fact, my stepdad was a part owner of a cemetery growing up and working at a funeral home. And he always said, Rich, I knew that you weren't called to do this for the rest of your life. Because when I saw someone out weeping at the graveside of their loved one, instead of weed eating or mowing what I was supposed to do with my responsibility and job, I went to meet that person in their suffering and I would kneel down next to them and listen to them. They would share stories of loved ones and we would hold hands and pray together. I was 20 years old. I was 19 years old working at a cemetery. Well, he knew that that wasn't what I was called to do for the rest of my life. But what was birthed out of that place of the grave was my vocation. Called to be in the company of those who weep and mourn. Just like Jesus. The priesthood in Persona Christi is vocationed, is called vocare. God is calling the priesthood to accompany those who are weeping and mourning. I could have never imagined the joy of this vocation. I could have never imagined doing this work. And today, more than ever, as I sit there and I pray and I think about what we're facing today, truly, from my heart, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but to be where I am with you in the very setting that we find ourselves in. Know of my prayers for you. Know that priests and bishop and cardinals and even the Holy Father just this past week in his Orbi et Orbi, in his blessing from Rome and his communication and commentary to Rome and to the whole world. Know that we are here to accompany you. Think of the consolation of Jesus that he extended to Martha and Mary and all who loved Lazarus, the fact that he wept with them, anticipating that expressive power of calling Lazarus from the dead? Well, Jesus is doing that now. Mystically, from eternity. The actions Jesus did in his life on earth echoes in eternity, and it reveals a greater place than Elysium, a greater place than any mythology or any imagination of the heart. Jesus expresses to us that we will never be alone, and you are never alone. His life and his deposit of faith has echoed in every generation and has cried out the gospel, the good news of Jesus' authority over the grave. So as you focus your attention right now, rightfully so, circumstantially, on the encroaching death, on the encroaching disease or virus, 
on the encroaching reality of our own mortality. I say that is good. And that is precisely where we need to be because it centers us right back on the promise of Jesus Christ. That promise that he says to you. But the question is, do you believe? Do you believe?